move on now to uh, to Christian on the on the VC side of things. So Christian Lim, uh, he's a founding partner of Blue Oceans Partners based in Paris. Uh, they're focused on scaling innovative solutions on overfishing and plastics pollution. Um, last I heard, they, uh, Blue Oceans was still in fundraising. Um, Christian was previously investment director at Africa Invest with about one and a half billion AUM. Uh, they focused on investments in banking, insurance, and microfinance. Uh, I also hear that Christian is a free diver. So maybe we can ask you later how long you can hold your breath for. So um, take it away, Christian. Yeah, about a third of my slot uh, allocated here. <laughs> the time allocated to me today. Uh, thanks, Kuni, and, and, and uh, hi, Peter. Nice to meet you all. Uh, greetings from Paris. Um, so on the, as you understand, understood, I'm, I'm both an investor and passionate about the ocean. Um, and this is why I have uh, co-founded Blue Oceans Partners. Uh, what we do um, is uh, we're in venture capital firm. We invest in innovations that help regenerate ocean health and achieve SDG 14. And we're interested in innovations that can deliver both systemic impact and competitive market returns. Um, we look at three main areas, uh, the three solutions to three main threats to the ocean. Uh, one, uh, so the solutions to overfishing, second, solutions to pollution, and third, uh, solutions to climate change based on uh, ocean, uh, you know, ocean solutions. Um, and so why do we do this? Um, uh, the, uh, we believe that, um, and I think more of us are, are you know, uh, becoming aware of that, uh, that the ocean is, is facing uh, uh, you know, uh, really uh, critical threats, and that is, it actually turns into an existential threat for ourselves. So if you take the example of, uh, uh, of overfishing, uh, we have already 90% of our fish stocks uh, that are either uh, overfished or on the brink of becoming overfished to date. Uh, and uh, if you look at 40, 40 years ago, uh, uh, less than 8% of fish stocks were overfished. So you see there's a dynamic that is actually frightening. Uh, same thing on plastic pollution. And, and of course, we need fish to feed ourselves. So this is raises really existential questions for us. Same thing on plastic pollution. Um, uh, today, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, we're already uh, 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 throwing away uh, in eight million tons of plastics uh, every year into the ocean. And the prediction is that by 2050, we'll have more uh, than, uh, if we continue at this pace, we will have more plastic in the ocean than fish. Um, and the, the result of that is that already today we are uh, every one of us on this panel, uh, we're actually ingesting everyday plastic under the form of microplastics. Uh, a world uh, a WWF study uh, shows that uh, um, we ingest up to, uh, you know, uh, the equivalent of a credit card of plastic every week uh, on average in the world. So, um, so this is really threatening us as well as, as the ocean. Uh, and at the same time, what we see is an incredible business opportunity. Uh, because, um, as I think uh, Alison mentioned earlier, uh, the consumer is being aware uh, of, uh, of those changes and is demanding change, demanding change to corporates, demanding change to government. And this is translating uh, in strong action taken, for instance, by uh, you know, the global brands. Uh, most of them in 2018, um, again, you know, including Nestle, Unilever, Coca-Cola, um, they have all pledged that by 2025, they will move away from single-use plastic. Uh, uh, and this is actually uh, triggering a profound transformation of the entire plastic industry. That's a, th that's a $350 billion uh, market. It's also a market that is growing at, that is uh, production of plastic is also doubling every 11 years. So this, and we need to transform this entire uh, market. And um, this is exactly the type of innovation, what the innovations we're supporting uh, are doing. So this translates into an incredible business opportunity. Um, what I didn't say in our strategy is that we're actually um, also focusing on Europe. We do have the flexibility to invest in, in, uh, in, uh, 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 in very specific opportunities, unique opportunities outside of Europe, but the core is on Europe. And the reason is that uh, we see actually uh, um, really unparalleled opportunities in this region. Um, 
uh, Europe is is leading in some um, in some sectors, like Norway leading in aquaculture, as as uh, um, uh, as our first speaker, as Carl was saying. Uh, we see Europe in, 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 uh, leading in some technologies, like uh, for instance, insect proteins. Uh, you may have heard that some of the insect companies, uh, you know, protein, protein uh, companies uh, producing uh, proteins from insects, have raised hundreds of millions uh, of dollars in the, in the past uh, two years. Uh, most of them are actually based in France for some reason, um, and also uh, Europe is leading on regulation in many areas. So they have. Uh, um, you know, uh, Alison mentioned this uh, ban on single use. Uh, clearly, this is happening uh, already. European directive was passed, and this is happening right now uh, in, in all across Europe. And so, this is uh, also um, this is the type of opportunity we wanted the sites, and this is the reason why we're based in Europe for for that. Um, and so, how do we do it? Um, we invest specifically in innovations that have, uh, as I said, um, in companies that have uh, impact uh, and uh, and 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 returns fully aligned in their model. Uh, so uh, I just give one example. For instance, we invested in one of those companies, those insect, um, uh, those pro uh, a company called Next Protein that produces uh, proteins from insects, and it substitutes fish meal, which is the main source of protein for uh, for to feed farm fish, uh, and is made from wild caught fish itself. You know, uh, caught from depleted stock, um, and so. Uh, and also those insects are fed with uh, food waste. Um, and so uh, in, in this type of company, uh, you can very see very clearly that um, just by being successful, they actually solve a fundamental problem, uh, so feeding uh, farmed fish uh, in a sustainable way, uh, solving, transforming food waste into high value proteins. So creating a circular economy for, uh, for food waste. Um, and at the same time, it's incredible business opportunity because they address, they are the, actually today the only scalable uh, alternative uh, to the $7 billion uh, uh, fish meal opportunity. So that exemplifies how in all our investment impacts and returns are fully aligned. Um, how do we translate that? So that's in our strategy, but we also translated that, and I think it's quite unique, at the heart of our governance. And to do this, we have created an impact committee uh, that uh, approves uh, uh, every investment that we make, and it has the same power as the investment committee. Uh, and this impact committee is, uh, uh, includes independent members, uh, such as Brad Ack, who was the former vice president of WWF US in charge of oceans. Um, and, um, and so they put, uh, yeah, they put, uh, they validate the impact thesis uh, the, of every investment. Um, and it's extremely important because ocean impact is actually very complex. So you can imagine, you know, how do we, uh, achieve, uh, you know, um, uh, prove that we achieve a positive impact on ocean biodiversity. Uh, it's not easy. We do it through the best science available, but it's good to have those experts also validate those. Um, and uh, yes, uh, finally, I should, uh, I think you mentioned our status. Last time we spoke, we were, uh, we were starting the fundraising. So we started deploying, but we do it on a deal by deal basis today. So we have a pool of investors that are that work with us on, on, on specific opportunities. Uh, and then we continue to, to build a, a fund specifically with this strategy. Um, and uh, and uh, so the first strategy focuses on a subset of what I've mentioned earlier. So uh, uh, solutions to overfishing and plastic pollution. Um, and um, and we'll hopefully, you, you know, uh, we, uh, we, target, uh, we target a launch uh, in the first quarter of next year. And so if anyone is interested in joining, uh, we're happy to, uh, to have a, a discussion. Yeah, yeah I think you're still muted, uh, Philip. Uh, yeah, you're muted. Right. Can, yeah. can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess for the first question, uh, you know, tell us a bit about, you know, investing in overfishing. You, you, you talked about the, uh, about the you know you know the, the the fish meal and that's maybe one potential way but you know what are the some of the other ways that you can that you can invest profitably in overfishing? Yeah, so uh, they are we should look at four uh, four areas. Uh, um, one is uh, solutions for sustainable fisheries, um, and so for instance we we look at. Uh, uh, ropeless fishing, uh, you know, solutions that will help fishermen prevent the loss of their fishing gear. Uh, and this uh, is actually 
Uh, this type of solutions are of course good for the environment because lost fishing gear continues to fish and contributes to plastic pollution, but it's also hugely profitable for fishermen because they don't like losing their fishing gear and, uh, um, and, uh, and, and their, their, catch, their catches. Um, so that's one uh, way. The second way is to look at sustainable aquaculture uh, because aquaculture has the potential you know, to, uh, to help us uh, transition from hunter-gatherers of fish to uh, farmers of, of fish, just as we have for meat. And so this is happening and will happen, but if we can do it sustainably, then, then that's when we really you know, achieve our goals. Um, and today there's a tremendous opportunity to transform aquaculture, which is still, you know, in uh, very some, uh, which is not using all the, you know, the, the credible technologies that we have through computer vision, uh, you know, uh, remote sense, you know, IoT sensors uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, we have all those technologies now that can help us create uh, the, the, you know, really aquaculture 2.0, the digital aquaculture, precision aquaculture. And I can improve uh, both the productivity of aquaculture tremendously. Um, so in some types of aquaculture, you have mortalities that go to up to 50 percent in shrimp farming, for instance. So you can imagine how much profit to be, you know, increase uh, by how much you can increase profitability with those technologies. And at the same time, you can address uh, the fundamental uh, sustainability issues of, of aquaculture, such as, um, you know, excess feeding, which is the main one of the main sources of pollution of aquaculture. Um, so huge opportunity here, just fish meal is $7 billion, as I said, growing at 8% per, per year. Uh, on the, um, uh, the third aspect is ocean data. So we look here at, uh, you know, uh, satellites, uh, sea drones, uh, flying drones, uh, new sensors, all of these create data and we can, of course, leverage artificial intelligence to analyze this data and uh, better manage uh, fish stocks, uh, um, detect illegal fishing, uh, manage marine protected areas. And what is amazing is that this data, of course, is very impactful. I mean, if we can make marine protected areas efficient, we basically it's crack the problem of, uh, you know, of our fishing. Uh, uh, but at the same time, this data is highly valuable. Uh, this data is useful for uh, global shipping companies. It's useful for insurers. Uh, it's useful for, you know, uh, weather forecasting. So it's, it's highly profitable business at the same time. And last, we look at fish alternatives, such as, you know, the beyond meats, you know, cell-based uh, uh, cell uh, fish or plant-based fish. So the, you know, the beyond meats of, of fish, if you will. And here again, I think uh, the markets and the business opportunity has been proven by, uh, you know, by pioneering companies like Beyond Meats uh, uh, or Impossible Burger. And to say we anticipate uh, uh, similar opportunities in the space for, for fish. Maybe maybe someday we'll see a a, a Beyond Meat uh, version of sushi. So <laughs> that's that's happening probably faster than you think. <laughs> um, I guess one 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 last question. Um, you know, the, I mean, drawing attention to the 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 problems facing the ocean, you know, is so critical right now. Uh, but you know, the conversation probably gets more dominated by by climate change. You know, how do you? How do you uh, get investors to focus more on, on solving the ocean problems? Yeah, uh, so, so mean on, ah, okay. So first, um, uh, we will look at climate change through, uh, through an ocean angle, uh, but probably with our second fund. Uh, and, and there are plenty of ways that the ocean can help address uh, climate, you know, climate change. So let's look at, uh, seaweed farming and which is an incredible way to capture you know uh, capture carbon uh, but also i think um, uh, you know for in investors it's pretty easy to understand that uh, addressing plastic pollution is important for the ocean it's important for us and it's also incredible business opportunity uh, as i said uh, you just listened to unilever you know nestle coca-cola we need to completely transform the plastic industry. They have made commitments. They're investing a lot in that. Uh, and what we see is the you know startups that we back getting incredible opportunities that they didn't have just you know three four years ago. Uh, so yes, looking at case studies uh, will we'll completely demonstrate uh, that uh, there is uh, incredible business and impact opportunity here. I think we got time for one one last one. So as a as a as a you know VC and uh, VC equity investor, 
what's what type of returns are you are you targeting yeah so uh, we're targeting uh, 15 plus uh, net for for in, uh, for our LPs and um, we uh, you know we we really look at uh, uh, you know achieving delivering competitive market uh, returns as uh, of course a way to meet the you know our achieve our, uh, our feed, uh, meet our fiduciary goals and and satisfy investors but also a way to scale uh, the the investments uh, you know the innovations that we support faster uh, and uh, you know and 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 broader uh, so um, for us uh, you know achieving those returns is completely embedded into our impact strategy great well thank you very much christian appreciate you being here yeah,